So you're at this critical junction when you're thinking about whether or not to do a PhD. A PhD sets you up for a career in research, even though your skills, of course, might apply more widely. It involves working with a professor or a research group and understanding a subject that is at the boundary of what we know and what we understand in such detail that ultimately you're going to be knowing more than your advisors and professors, and that's when you graduate. The evaluation is really, can you lead a research group on your own? You'll be really diving into this area, this field. You'll be trying to understand what's going on by reading a bunch of papers, setting up experiments in many fields, or somehow evaluating new ideas that you might get, or bridging ideas from other fields, and trying to answer some of the problems that are still open and that are important, have some sort of impact to them. And you'll be doing a lot of writing, you'll write your own papers, and you'll have to publish them, and you'll have to defend them in front of other colleagues, and at the end, you'll collate some of those papers together, and that's your dissertation, and that's when you're done. So life as a graduate student is not well paid, and it can be stressful, but it's also a place where you have a unique time to think, and you get to meet amazing people, classmate people that you meet in the academia, and your colleagues in the research field itself. These are relationships that are going to last a lifetime. A PhD study is typically four to six years, but it's not a risk thing. If you don't want to do it, you can walk at any time. When you're picking a place, try to pick a place that has multiple faculty whose research you like and whom you could possibly work with. If you arrive there, the first relationship doesn't work out, you can then have other options. Advising styles differ greatly between professors. If you do decide to apply, you'll be sending in a batch of recommendation letters by somebody who can comment on your teaching and research. Ideally, you'd be sending in some research that you've done on your own, and you'll be writing a statement of purpose, which I'll talk about separately in the video. Good luck.